On the build show today, three remodel ripoffs. At best, they may not live up to their expectations. At worst, they may be a total scam. Now here's the executive summary if you don't have time for the whole video. Powered attic ventilators, total scam. Smart thermostats, actually pretty dumb. Window replacements on a remodel, never live up to what they say they're going to. Today's build show, let's dig into all the detail on these three remodel ripoffs. Let's get going. Number one, powered attic ventilators. These are a massive scam, people. You do not need a powered attic ventilator. Whether it's wired to your electricity or solar powered, they're a total waste. Let's talk about the science behind this one real fast. I drew a sketch for you so we could kind of uh, dig into those details. Where does the heat come from that's in your attic that these fans are supposedly pulling out? Most of that heat comes through radiation. If you think about your roof, most of the roofs in America are dark asphalt shingles and the roof is pitched perfectly to capture those rays from the sun. And as those rays, that radiation heats up your attic, what's happening? Your wood's getting hot, your decking's getting hot. If you were up in a traditional attic in Texas in the summertime, you probably couldn't even touch the backside of the sheathing, it's so hot. As that radiation drives into our attic, do we really think that a powered attic fan is gonna cool it down? Now, if you watch their advertising and, and you look at some of their online ads, they're going to say, oh, this is going to pool cool air through your soffit vents and then drive that hot air out. But is it really going to do that? With that radiation, this is kind of akin to putting your hot pocket in the microwave and expecting that you could put a little fan on the microwave window and blow enough cool air in there so that hot pocket wouldn't get warm with the radiant energy from your microwave. The sun is a giant microwave in the sky that's heating the entire earth. And if you were sunbathing with your bikini on and you put a little fan on you, do you really think that's gonna cool you enough at the beach to keep you cool and not feel hot? No way, you would need a jet engine. Now a couple other things that these do, which is even bigger problem, is they can actually depressurize your attic. Check out this little sketch right here. Let's say this is a, tr a traditional Southern house where it has some duct work into the attic like my house has. Anytime your furnace kicks on, you're losing a little bit of that cold furnace air to the attic. And so there's a little bit of um, negative pressure on your house. Now when that attic fan kicks on and blows out, the bigger the fan, the more negative pressure in your attic, which means that all of your penetrations in your drywall ceiling, your can lines, your vents, even wires that are through your top plates are going to want to pool cool air from the house. And in fact, that's a lot of the action that's happening when those temperatures in your attic are cooler with a powered attic fan is that they're sucking the house's cool air out of there. Now, actually, uh, as I was doing a little bit of research for this video, I was looking at some websites uh, and trying to see what people were saying about their solar attic fans. Look at this one that I found that I could not believe some of the claims this is making. Like, look at this diagram right here. This diagram is basically claiming that you could cool your attic temperature by like 60 degrees plus with an attic fan. That is so unbelievably not true. It's crazy. And they're, they're surmising that your house temperatures would be 10 degrees cooler by using this attic fan. This is, this is so much of a absolute scam. I, ca I can't even believe that they would have this. And what's worse is some of the manufacturers of these attic fans are saying, oh, we're solar, so it's totally not worth, uh, so we're not using energy, right, for this. We're getting free energy from the sun. The problem is these units are not cheap and they're not free and they need install. I'll put a link below to a couple articles, especially a great one from my friend Allison Bales at Energy Vanguard, who really, really digs into the science on this. But the bottom line is it's a scam. Next up, smart thermostats. These are gonna typically run you about 250, maybe even more dollars. And I like how you've got Wi-Fi integration. I think they can be a benefit in a couple of ways, but energy savings is not one of them. Now I have to admit, when I went on to try and find some of the ads that I remembered from a few years ago when they started coming onto the market, I seem to remember them saying like, oh, you can save 25% on your energy bills. And the idea is, oh, we're gonna change the thermostat based on understanding what you're doing in the house. So when you go away to work, we're gonna turn the thermostat up. 
The problem is there's just not enough energy savings there to justify 250 bucks. Your dumb thermostat's gonna do all you need. The problem with these smart thermostats though is sometimes they can be almost too smart for their own good. There's a particular setting uh, on a really popular one called um, Airwave. And that setting leaves the fan on for several minutes after the air conditioner stops running, particularly as we talk about cooling. Now I did a quick diagram on this. Let's think about this. If you've got a central air conditioner, let's say an upflow box like a lot of houses in Texas, the idea is in the summertime, you're bringing that hot air in, it's going through the furnace, and inside the furnace is the AC coil. It's often referred to as the A coil. It's A-shaped, kind of pyramid-shaped. It gets cold from the Freon line that's running to it, so it's usually around 50-some degrees there. And what happens as that hot air runs through that coil, it sheds its heat. The other thing that happens is that coil is the dew point temperature, which means that any moisture that's in that air is going to accumulate on that coil. Just like if I had a glass of cold water here, you would see water formulating on the outside of the glass. And the longer that is on your, on your tabletop, the more water kind of drips down to the bottom. That water is called condensation. And your AC has a condensate drain. The problem is that AC needs to run for at least 10 minutes before enough water accumulates on that coil to drip down the drain. Now, like most houses in America, if yours is oversized, meaning you have too big of an engine outside, you have a real big coil that gets real cold, it's gonna cool your house relatively quickly, especially on mild days. Now, if it's 102 out, it's gonna run a lot and that's no problem. But if it's not 102 out, let's say it's uh, 85 degrees out, your air conditioner may only run for 10 minutes and then turn off and that's gonna satisfy the set point temperature. Now my coil has a bunch of moisture on it, but that moisture hasn't run down the condensate drain. And if that air wave setting goes for another 10 minutes and we keep blowing air by it, we're basically rehydrating that water that's on the condensate drain. We're sending it back in the air, which means that we haven't dehumidified. And ultimately, a lot of houses in the South, people kick down their air conditioner to get comfortable in the summertime to, you know, 72, 70, maybe even 68 degrees because the humidity is elevated. Now, I've talked about this a bunch. I really think that you need a separate dehumidifier. But if you don't have a separate dehumidifier, do not use the airwave switch. And for heaven's sakes, don't use the fan on mode. That's where the fan runs all the time. The only time you might consider using the fan on mode is when you've got allergies and you've got things in the house you're trying to filter out. Other than that, you should use the auto mode, which is only gonna run the fan when the coil is cold to run air. And as soon as that fan turns off, that coil is cold, that water is still gonna continue dripping down if there's not airflow past that. So that smart thermostat actually might be dumb when it comes to comfort in your house. And the last one, replacement windows. You know, again, I think the window manufacturers have gotten better, and actually the, uh, the local replacement contractors have gotten better about not advertising big savings numbers. But it wasn't that long ago that I saw ads about 40% savings on your energy bill if you replace your windows. That is so not true, it's not, even, it's not even a question. Let's look at what the EPA says in terms of what you could save. If you go to their Energy Star website and you look at window replacements and what you could save by going from single pane to double pane windows, and that's, that's pretty typical still in America to see some houses with single pane windows. If you go from a single pane to a double pane, they're saying that you might save $126 to $465 annually on your windows because of this window change from single to double. The problem is it's very climate specific. To get to that top 465 a year, you gotta be in a really cold climate. We're talking about the very upper levels of America and certainly into Canada, maybe you could expect to see that going from single to double. The problem though is the payback is forever on this. If you multiply 465 times, let's say 30 years, which is the time of your mortgage, that's just shy of $14,000. Now, if you're in a more mild climate, anywhere from the middle of America down, let's say at Texas where I am, I think it's more likely you're gonna save $126. Multiply 126 times 30, 3780, not even $4,000. So that 
five, six, eight thousand uh, dollar bid from that window manufacturer or local window rep, I should say, for changing your windows out, you're talking about a lifetime of house ownership before that's going to really save you the kind of money that they might advertise. So be really cautious about that. The reason why you're going to change those windows is mainly aesthetics, maybe resale value, and maybe comfort. Changing from a single to a double pane window that has full sun means that you're going to have a much more comfortable house, especially with low E coatings on windows today. It's also going to look nicer and you have the opportunity to change the action on the windows. Typical single pane, uh, single hung or double hung windows have brush seals. That's a lot of those seals that look like this and they tend to be pretty air leaky. When the wind is blowing, they're going to leak. Even new windows that are single or double hung are more air leaky than a fixed pane of glass or than glass that has a casement style operation. So I tend to always look for what windows could I fix in the house that I'm not going to need to operate and what windows could I switch to casements. And of course you can also change to clear glass rather than all those divided lights and that's certainly going to modernize uh, houses. That's what I did at my house and that's been a great change. Guys, hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, in no way, shape, or form am I saying that you shouldn't use a smart thermostat. I actually have one and I like it. I love being able to control my temperature when I'm away on vacation to leave it really high for a week and then come home and cool it down right before I get home. I also think that window replacements are a great idea, but there's not the energy savings there. And if you didn't get anything from this video, my hope is that you will remember that powered attic ventilators are totally stupid and you should not do one. Do not fall prey to the online advertising you see there. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.